Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I really hope you're all well. Here is me filming two videos for you on the same day. How can you tell? Because I'm wearing the exact same thing in both videos. And I'm just gonna draw attention to it now because I don't know which video is going up first. I don't know if there'll be one going up in between. So I'm just I'm just calling myself out for this because yeah, I don't normally I, I will actually switch clothes if I'm filming more than once in a day. But today I didn't because I didn't want to ruin my makeup because I am going out for dinner this evening. Me, the person who's literally spent the last 16 months in my bedroom is going out for dinner and I'm so excited. Oh wonderful, there's children making noise outside my window. I really hope you guys can't hear that. Anyway, okay, today we're doing the best and worst books that I have read this year so far. Now, yes, I was going to do the mid-year book freak out tag, but to be honest, it is like mid-June when I'm filming this and I truly do not think I will get it up before uh, the end of June. So I didn't want to upload a late one. So yes, we're doing the five best and five worst books that I have read so far this year. I'm going to caveat that though, because the worst books aren't necessarily bad. I mean, there's one book on there, which is objectively awful, but the rest of them aren't like bad books. They're just disappointing. But to be honest, the title sounded better when I said best and worst. So yeah, I'm just going to leave it with that. But they're, they're more just disappointing books. Honestly, like it's so difficult to kind of differentiate between the five best books of the year so far, because truly I have loved them all pretty much equally. Um, so I do want to say that before I get into it, that all of them I have loved with my whole heart. And to be honest, there's probably like 15 books that I could have put on the best pile. Um, the worst books, like I say, are just the ones that I was most disappointed by. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of do one at a time. We're going to count down from like least worst and least best to like the best and the worst. That was really bad English, but you guys will know what I'm talking about. So we'll start off on a good note. We'll start off with the first of my best reads of the year. And actually, interestingly, all five of these best books of the year are indie published books. We love that, right? Like, I am so happy that I've started reading so many more indie authors this year. Like, it, oh, I love it so much. But yeah, so the first one is A Credence by Penelope Douglas. Oh my God, this book. I mean, honestly, one of my new life goals is to be stuck in the mountains in Colorado in a log cabin for the winter and just with a sexy man. Just one sexy man because I don't need more than one. But yeah, just, just one outrageously sexy man, log cabin, snow. That would do me fine. Um, <laughs> so this book is a little bit taboo. So this is a very big age gap romance. I'm just going to throw that out there straight away. If age gap is not your thing, you are not going to like this book. If reverse harem isn't your thing or kind of like multiple guys and one girl, you won't like this book. Um, if you're open-minded for both of those things, you will probably like this book. So this is very smutty. All of these books really that are on my best pile are a definite 18 plus. Um, and this is about Tiernan whose parents are, I want to say they're quite famous. Um, and they're very wealthy. She lives in LA with them and they're so obsessed with each other and they've kind of like shut in and out her whole life. They, they never loved her as much as they loved each other. And I think one of them gets sick. So they basically decide to commit suicide so they can die together. And then they leave Tien and obviously like orphaned. So she gets a call one day from her step uncle. I'm just gonna really emphasize that step uncle. <laughs> who is named in the will as kind of the person to look after her if she if her parents die when she is still underage and she's a few months off 18 and he invites her to go and stay with him and his sons in Colorado and she's not really got anything left for her in LA so she thinks you know what fuck it let's go so she gets on a plane goes to meet this uncle that she's never met before and meets his two sons who one of them is quite troubled so it's, it's a little bit interesting really because there's like the age gap element there's like almost an enemies to lovers and then there's just like a kind of friends to lovers to friends situation in there as well but she effectively ends up kind of romantically entangled with all three of the guys over the course of this winter in a log cabin. <sighs> Smut is incredible. I didn't think I was going to vibe with this as much as I did but I just loved it and just look at that cover. It's just so beautiful. I want to be there like right now, like right there. Stunning. Um, 
so yeah like I literally loved this so much I was captivated I was kind of shocked because this was the first age gap that I'd ever read and yeah I loved it I love Penelope Douglas with my whole heart at this point it was brilliant so yeah first of the best books of the year so far incredible moments so the first of the disappointing books and i think a few people have actually had a very similar reading experience um to me and this is the city of brass by sa chakraborty i bought this um i think with like christmas money and i was so excited to read it because it sounded so good and honestly it got off to such a promising start as well i was kind of hooked and then it just lost me and yeah i was really sad so nari um is kind of living in cairo i think it's like 18th century cairo yeah 18th century cairo so she's working as kind of like a healer um and then one day she accidentally summons a jinn warrior which should be possible and she ends up having to flee with him and he takes her to devabad which is like the jinn city and it turns out that her kind of life, her heritage is not what she thought. And she's actually quite like an important um, person in their history or what I, I don't want to give it away. So, yeah. Um, and it, it is interesting. This book kind of like is about her finding out her heritage. And yeah, I just really wanted to love it. But as you can probably tell from me trying to describe it to you, it just feels like a whole lot of nothing happened for a lot of the book. And I think that's where it lost me because there just wasn't enough plot. There wasn't enough stuff happening to like really keep me hooked. I have bought the second one and I will read the second one, which is the only reason why I haven't unhauled this. Um, because I do want to give the second one a go and see if it picks up. I think a few people have said it has. Um, so yeah, I want to give it another go. But it just... It was just lacking, which is a real shame, but yeah. The next one on my best list, and again, just please remember that this has no real order, because to be honest, these are all kind of like equal number one. Um, the next one is Birthday Girl, also by Penelope Douglas, so you will have seen me do a reading vlog of this recently. If you haven't, I will leave it in the cards. Um, but basically, my booktube bestie, Renee, gifted me this book off my Amazon wish list for a reading vlog, and I gifted her one off of her list, um, and this was just a fantastic read i think this honestly is like my new comfort book because i loved it so much but this follows the story of jordan i actually forgot her name then for a second this follows the story of jordan and she is dating um a guy who just really isn't giving her what she needs he's a little bit of a bum he doesn't really respect her he doesn't really make any effort and she's starting to kind of um resent that i guess so Due to financial difficulties, they get kicked out of their apartment and they have to go move in with her boyfriend's dad, Pike. And it turns out that Jordan has met Pike before. And yeah, there's some little sparks going on, you know? There's, there's, there's some, some chemistry, some connection. Um, and anyway, yeah, obviously things, things happen. So this is another age gap romance. And again i thought the age gap would freak me out it doesn't this book was everything i adored pike literally with my whole heart he is just wonderful and i think the reason i like this so much i saw this mentioned on a goodreads review and i also said it in my reading vlog this is a taboo book yes because of the age gap but it's a taboo book where actually the characters are not problematic and i think that's why it was so lovely to read because i think in so many of these kind of like darker romance books there's a lot of toxicity there's a lot of manipulation there's a lot of that kind of behavior or actual physical violence and in this book there was actually none of that like there was literally not a single actual bad bit of behavior it's literally just the case that she fell in love with somebody who was older than her um and yeah i really loved it so if you're into an age gap romance or you want to read some more penelope douglas i would 100 percent recommend this one it was beautiful and i loved it and i'm obsessed yeah okay so next up on my disappointing list we have the inheritance games by jennifer lynn barnes there was nothing actually objectively wrong with this book it just i thought it was a um just kind of a general contemporary kind of mystery rather than it being ya so for me i found this a little bit more immature for my personal reading tastes but it was good it was i think the girl's name's avery yeah avery she basically finds out that she has inherited this huge fortune and she doesn't really understand why because she's never met the guy who died 
Um, so she ends up having to go and listen to the will and obviously his family are really pissed and basically her and the family get kind of embroiled in these games that this guy has like left behind to try and solve why she's inherited the will. It's very like Knives Out. It gave me some serious Knives Out vibes and yeah, you know what? It wasn't bad. It just wasn't good. Well, no. You know what? Like it wasn't a bad book. It just was not what I was hoping for from it um but it was still it was enjoyable I didn't hate it I think it was a solid three stars and yeah it was like I said my own fault for picking up a YA and thinking it was an adult fiction oh my god you guys this freaking book yes it's another Penelope Douglas this was actually the first Penelope Douglas I've ever read this is Corrupt and it is book one in the Devil's Night series and oh my this is so dark and twisted and disturbing and toxic and terrible in every single way and I loved every second of it. <laughs> so this is basically, the Devil's Night series essentially follows four different guys. It is the, they call themselves the Four Horsemen and they are kind of um, from this like super rich town in America and these guys are like the wealthiest of the wealthy, well they're the kids of the wealthiest of the wealthy so they kind of gotten away with loads of bad behaviour over the years and basically the night before Halloween every single year is devil's night where they go out with all the other kind of teenagers and cause like crazy chaos and anyway one year on devil's night shit went wrong and they three of the four ended up getting arrested so they get sent to prison and then they're released and this book kind of follows what's happened immediately after their release but then also kind of talks about the person like what happened up to them getting arrested so you can kind of understand what's happening and it also follows the first of the guys in the four horsemen so this follows michael and it also follows erica or rika who is dating michael's little brother but actually has always been in love with michael and this is a bit of like an enemies to lovers thing it's so good it's literally so good so rika it has like moved out of their hometown she's moved to the city and michael is also in the city and basically he's just treating her like shit she can't understand why she doesn't know what she's done wrong and it kind of follows like their story and figuring out like why he hates her and oh my god it's so good like literally just oh. the smut in this one like it's smutty and it's good smut it's not like the smuttiest of smut that i've ever read but it is good um I feel like this one was the most shocking in terms of behaviour and also in terms of like the ending. This has definitely kept me the most hooked out of them all so far. I have Nightfall which is book four and then I also have like Fire Night which is the novella like little companion novella that happens like after the end of the series. I've just got those left to read um so I don't want to say this is the best in the series but so far this one and then with Kills which is a very close second. I loved it so so much so good. I love Michael as well, like literally adore him. Next on my disappointing list, we have Her Own Lake by Kat Ellis. Again, nothing wrong with this one. It's just another book where I thought it was gonna be like more adult and it's actually YA. So this is about Lola, whose dad is a famous movie director and she comes home one day and finds him injured. So she has to go and stay with her grandmother in Harrow Lake, which is the setting for his most famous horror film. And Harrow Lake's kind of like never moved on from the movie. So it's kind of like this weird little like cult almost of like insane movie fans. Um, and it's also kind of never moved on in time from like a disaster that hit the town in the early 1900s. Um, so everything's a little bit sinister and she arrives and there's like a lot of like weird shit happening and she's basically trying to uncover like this mystery and just yeah some crazy stuff happens to her i didn't hate this book like i actually did quite like it but it just it didn't scare me and i needed to be scared like that's what i bought it for i wanted like a horror you know and i just didn't find this horrific enough um yeah it's pretty i like the sprayed edges it was it was okay i actually found out that the author's based i think in north wales where i live so that's quite cool um but yeah not really what i wanted from the read so it is on my disappointing list you guys we're getting close to the end now okay so we have my i guess second favorite book of the year so far and this is hush hush by lucia franco this book had me freaking sobbing I like oh, so good this is another age gap romance and <laughs> apparently like i don't even have like a thing for age gap romances but yet like three have crept onto this list so maybe that's my subconscious trying to tell me something but um this is oh god this is so good like literally incredible although i can't actually remember the name of the main character aubrey 
So this is uh, this is about Aubrey, who is a college student in New York, and her parents have died, so she was raised by her grandma, and there's just like not a lot, not a lot of uh, words. She doesn't have a lot of money. Her roommate, however, Natalie, her parents are super wealthy, so Natalie kind of like pays for their apartment and stuff. And Natalie's living this really lavish life, and it turns out that she is a high class escort, and she kind of convinces Aubrey to also join this escort agency to make a lot of money so Aubrey does but the first rule of the agency is not to fall in love with any of the clients and dun 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 I'm sure you can guess what happens <gasps> this book though honestly guys like I don't even want to give it any more than that away because I just don't want to spoil your reading experience I went into this knowing very little and I just adored every single second the smut's brilliant it's emotional you're rooting for the characters the whole way through it's compelling it made me cry i loved it so much and there's actually like a little companion novella to this um that you can read afterwards which i mean it's not like essential and it's nothing spectacular but it is good the only thing i will say with this though is i did accidentally spoil myself with this book because the author puts like a little synopsis of her books at the start and i accidentally read the synopsis to say yes um, like I really didn't mean to but it also has the I guess the spoilers of her balance series as well the off balance series so I just wanted to um, kind of give you guys a heads up on that so you don't accidentally spoil yourself but I mean it didn't ruin my reading experience clearly because this was a five star book and like I said I cried so yeah I loved every single second of this I highly recommend it definitely think you should pick it up if you're kind of are funny about age gaps though like I mean you can I guess you can to a point kind of forget that it's an age gap but also like it's kind of a big age gap i think she's 21 and he's 50 so yeah next on my disappointing list is the fifth season by nk jamison and i'm so sad about this because i honestly thought i was going to love this so much and i'd been saving it and i finally picked it up to read and i just really didn't vibe um i think i was kind of confused most of the way through to be honest i i just wasn't really kind of like engaged with it I don't know if it was the writing, I don't know what it was, but just something about it just lost me. And I'm so disappointed because I wanted this to be like the incredible reading experience that everyone says it is. Um, yeah, it just wasn't for me and I won't be picking up the rest of the series. And I'm really sad because it won the Hugo Award and I think every single book in the trilogy has. And I think it might be one of the only trilogies where every single book has won the Hugo Award. But there we go. Um, this is a fantasy book for anyone wondering. It's kind of like a sci-fi fantasy um, about this like post-apocalyptic world and I don't want to give anything else away because I could very easily spoil this by accident and I don't really want to do that. Um, but it's interesting. It's about basically this is the way the world ends for the last time which it sounds incredible. It just lost it for me but I think a lot of people do love this. It's so... Yeah. Okay guys, so we're on to the best and worst of the year so far. Uh, I'll do the best of the year so far, I guess. This is probably, oh gosh, I just caught my, uh, my, my glass. I think this probably won't come as a surprise for anybody. And I feel like I need to caveat this because in terms of the writing, this probably isn't the best of the year so far, but in terms of the reading experience, it is. And that is From Blood and Ash by Jennifer L. Armantrout. I nearly forgot her name then. I just honestly loved this so much. It just took me by surprise. It brought me out of a reading slump. I raced through it. I loved every second and that's the reason why it's kind of like my number one book. I have, I will also just jump in here and say this is obviously not including rereads because I have reread a lot of my favourite books this year and obviously I love them so much but I didn't really want to include them in this list because I felt that kind of wasn't fair. Um, but yeah, this is a fantasy a romance series following Poppy, who is the maiden, and um, she is basically getting ready for her ascension, which is this kind of spiritual, um, oh god, like experience um, that people go through when they reach a certain age, but nobody really knows what happens unless you have already ascended, and with Poppy being the maiden, she's kind of like the most important person to ascend, so she lives a life of solitude up to her ascension. People aren't allowed to look at her face. She's not allowed to speak to people. And she lives a very kind of like solitary life. Um, but she doesn't really want that life. She kind of rebels against it. And she tries to sneak out. And she wants to fight. And she wants to kind of have an existence that isn't defined by her being the maiden. Um, so anyway, she ends up meeting a new guard who is kind of sent to protect her called a hawk. And he helps bring her out of her shell. And oh my god you guys this is incredible it's so good i loved it so much i loved the second one so much i gave them both five out of five stars i have the third book on my pile to read this month and i can't wait to get to it and yeah i'm just so obsessed with this series i highly recommend it it's wonderful and i loved it it's fast paced it's fun it's exciting 
yeah. And there's also like some of my favourite mythical creatures in this book. I don't really want to kind of like give away any spoilers, but yeah. Anyway, okay. From the best to the worst, and this is objectively like one of the worst books I think I have ever read, not just this year. That would be After by Anna Todd. Now, I literally bought this because I'd seen so many people rant reviewing it and I just wanted to see why people hated it so much. And like, I'd seen the movie and I mean, the relationship in the movie obviously is awful, but I think because it was the movie, you didn't really experience how bad the writing is. Um, so I thought, you know what? Like, I didn't hate the movie, like it was fine. So I'll read the book and see. It was absolutely terrible. Like the worst thing I've ever read. Um, I mean, yes, like this book was written on Wattpad and then made into a book. I'm sure maybe her, um, the other books like in the series might be better, but I just honestly, I just don't think I can put myself through reading them. I almost did. I was so close to buying them and just trying it, but I just can't bring myself to. So yes, there's a part of me that's curious to find out like what happens in the end. So I'll probably watch the rest of the movies, but um, yeah, this was just God awful in my opinion. But it follows Tessa who has lived this kind of like sheltered existence with a really overprotective, overbearing mother. Um, and she goes to college for the first time and she gets kind of paired with a roommate that her mum doesn't approve of. And this roommate introduces her to her friends and through that uh, Tessa meets Harden, who I think was supposed to be based off of Harry Styles. I believe this was a Harry Styles fanfic originally. Um, and basically she just ends up getting into this like fucking toxic, awful relationship. And the thing is like from the books that I have just spoken to you about, like so many of them are toxic AF, but the thing is they're not like glorified and it's not like romanticized, romanticized toxicity whereas this is like this is completely romanticized and this is aimed at a younger audience as well and it, well I mean it shouldn't be because it's definitely 18 plus but like I think it has been kind of marketed towards a younger audience and I just think it's a real shame that teenagers are picking this up and reading this and then actively wanting a relationship like Harden and Tessa have because it is so manipulative and so abusive like it's awful and it's not like abusive in the way of a lot of these books where you you know you can read them and kind of like take yourself out of the fiction and know as an adult that like that's not right i think the kids that are reading this probably actually want a relationship like harden and tessas and that's that worries me to be honest um i think there's just so many things wrong with this book and i hated every single second of it so not only is it my worst book of the year so far but spoiler alert if you've not watched my unhaul yet this this is going i don't, I don't want it in my collection anymore um so yes that is my best and worst books of the year so far i hope you guys have enjoyed the video if you have as always please do leave me a thumbs up leave me some comments i'm really enjoying chatting to you guys in the comments and getting to know you all better and of course if you are new to this channel as well please do subscribe it truly does mean the world to me and i'm just so happy and grateful to have such a wonderful community of fellow readers around me it makes me so happy every day um yeah so i'm gonna stop rambling now uh but i hope you guys have enjoyed the video i'll see you in another one very soon goodbye